Today we're going to show you how to create a tool in Robot Studio and attach it to your robot so that it can be used in the virtual system. Last time we created this virtual system, we used one of ABB's tools that were already be that was already created. Today we're going to take some custom geometry um, specifically for a laser cloud system I was a part of, the tool there. We're going to load in the geometry and then create the tool. First thing we have to do is actually upload the geometry into the station. So in the home tab, we're going to go to import geometry and we're going to hit browse for geometry and find the solid model for the gun we're going to use for the tool. Uh, I'm going to, I selected a file right here that's going to be that. A lot of the times the best files that come in are .sat files or step files. Um, some other ones are a little funky when they get dropped into Robot Studio. So if you can save those out via like SolidWorks or some modeling program, those are the best ones to use. And download into Robot Studio. So we're going to select that. It's going to get loaded in here. As you can see, um, when they were modeling this, um, depending on where the origin was set, it was placed kind of in a funky location out in space. That's okay. So once we import our geometry, we're going to make sure that the bodies and the surfaces can be selected on the geometry. That's going to be very important in the future. So we need to go into our layout here and examine it so that way we can get the rotation right. But we just want to make sure that all the surfaces and the bodies can be selected. So as you can see here, we have individual bodies, individual surfaces, and that's going to help us create our TCP frame. So we should be good to go there. So now that we've done, made sure that the bodies are coming, we're going to name the geometry to match the new tool's name. We're going to call this one T-Laser1. That's what I'll um, rename it. So you just right click, hit rename. We're just going to go in there, call this T-Laser1. Once we rename our tool, we're going to position the tool at world zero. So to see world zero, we're first going to hide the positioner so that we can see the grid. World zero is down here. We're going to make sure that, that the orientation of the tool is lined up in the x direction with world so it's going out in the x direction positively and that our mounting flange which is modeled in here that goes to the um, flange on axis six is directly at zero 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 the reason we're going to do that is so that we can rotate about zero and we don't have to define the local origin which takes more steps so we're, to do this, we're just going to place it. The position place one point. We're going to go from the center of that flange. Two zero 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 in the world coordinate system. And we want it to travel however it needs to get there. So we're going to do it in both all X, Y, and Z directions. So now we're going to look at our tool here. When we load this tool in, we have the flange placed at zero, zero, zero. Actually, we're going to adjust that a little bit so that it actually seats inside the hole of axis six. But now that we got it there, now we need to make sure that um, whatever surface is going to be attached to the flange of axis six is pointing straight up in the Z direction. That way, when we snap it to the robot, it snaps in correctly. So we're going to rotate this thing 90 degrees about the y-axis. So we're going to rotate about the y-axis using the right-hand rule. We're going to go in negative 90 degrees.
So now, like I said before, now we have it rotated in the right direction, but we need to get this flange so that it seats in the robot. So we need to move it down um, the width of that boss right there. So we're going to place it one more time. Just going to hit that existing flange surface. Make sure you're on top of the grid so that it sees it. So we're just going to go and hit the some sort of flange edge to zero zero. Just going to do it in the Z direction. So now that we got it placed correctly, now it, when we attach it to the robot, it should snap into it instantly. So now that we got our geometry placed where we needed it to be. Now we're going to create a frame for the TCP. So first we're going to go to the home tab, hit the frame option and create a frame. We're going to make sure that when we create this frame that it's going to be in the right location. So we're going to hit the center surface snap for our frame position. Frame orientation we don't care right now. We're just going to hit create. Close out of that. Now we need to make sure that it's absolutely set to the normal of that surface. So we're going to make it normal to the that bottom surface of that gas cup. Set normal to surface. And we're going to select, not modify anything in here. We're just going to select the surface that we want it to be normal to. And apply. Closed so that it so that this TCP matches up to the real world when you actually create a tool center point on the real system. We just want to make sure there that the only axis is that that TCP frame is um, rotated about is axis Y. If we go back into that frame and hit set position again, we're just going to see what it is with respect to world. And we're only rotated about the y-axis. We're not rotated about the z-axis or the x-axis, so we should be good to go. So we're going to close out of that again. So everything's set right there. And now we're going to actually want to offset the TCP based on our application. In this welding application, we had a focal point on the laser where the laser and the powder flow were 20 millimeters away from the surface. So we're going to do that for this one. To do that, it's fairly simple. We're just going to set our position again. And instead of going to world, we're going to go based directly off the frame and we're just going to move it out in the Z direction, 20 millimeters. So now our, now our TCP is in the correct direction. In welding applications, commonly what you see is a 15 millimeter offset between the contact tip, um, and the TCP for the wire. When you get up to an 045 diameter wire, you can you typically see a 20 millimeter offset. For lasers, laser cameras, you're kind of look, going off the manufacturer's spec to see what that TCP is and what its orientation is. And then machining is obviously specific to what tool you're using and where that physical tip of that tool is. So for this one, we're just going off of what the manufacturer recommendations are for this later laser cladding head. Once we've positioned it correctly, we're actually going to rename this TC this frame to match the geometry name and the TCP name. So we're going to call it T Laser 1. Once we got the geometry and the frame put together, we're actually ready to create the tool. So we're actually going to go to the modeling tab. And under our mechanism section, we're going to hit create tool. We're going to name that tool the same as we named our geometry and our frame and the name that we want to use for our TCP. Just to keep everything consistent. We're going to use our existing components. If there were more in here, it would show them, but all we have is the laser in there. So we'll just hit the existing geometry. And for as far as mass, center of gravity, moment of inertia, 
if you had a very big tool like for material handling or a big complex tool that put a lot of weight on the arm, um, you could have engineering data placed in here. On a lot of the real systems, you actually run what's called a load ID to get a lot of this data. For what we're doing and for um, smaller tools, you don't necessarily have to worry about this, especially in the virtual programming setup. So we're gonna hit next. Now we're gonna drag in our, our frame that we're gonna use for our TCP and it's gonna, it automatically populates to what we used for the other ones. We're gonna make sure that we hit T-Laser 1. We're gonna hit this arrow to move it over to that TCP. And then we're gonna hit done. Now that we've done that, we have created our laser complete with a TCP. At this point, we can delete our old frame so that we don't use up space in it. And now that we've created the tool, we're gonna actually um, save it as a library. The reason that you save as a library in ABB is it reduces on some of the memory if you're creating a ton of tools, a ton of geometry and a ton of models in there. Libraries um, are saved as a smaller file size. And also when you create a library, you can put it in a location where you want it to the robot studio to reference it so that you can create a host of tools and libraries in a specific location that you can load directly into another station. So to do that, we're gonna right click on our component, our tool. We're gonna hit save as library. And keep it the same name, T-Lasers1. And I just have it under a library folder. I can actually go into here, Robot Studio Libraries, and just save it right there. So once I hit that, it'll create a library for me. Save the it saved the library successfully, so we did that right. Now, if you were just to save this station and open it back up again, when it start when the robot studio initializes, it's going to look for that specific file path. So if you actually delete that library from there, it's not going to find it. It's going to ask you to find it somewhere else. And if you can't find it, it can't load it in. The one way you can get around this is if you create a pack and go and then open that pack and go, it automatically um, brings in those libraries and condenses them into that into that file created by the pack and go. And it will contain all the station library and program information. So now that we've created our tool, created a TCP, and then saved it as a library, we're now going to attach it to the robot. It's as simple as clicking on it and dragging it up to our robot. It says, do you wanna update the position of T-Laser 1? If we hit yes, it's gonna to snap to where it needs to go. If no, it's actually gonna stay in location and it's gonna to try to use the tool in its current location. So we're gonna hit yes on it. And once we do that, you can see that the tool is now ready to be used. And if you wanna verify that, you can actually select and do some jogging with this bad boy. So you can see that it's actually moving with the robot. So now you've created a tool with an accurate TCP. Just hit this and jump to home. And then if we look into our home tab, into our paths and targets, you will see that in our tool data is created a T-Laser 1. So that when we do create modules and programs, this will be loaded in the tool data inside, our, inside the Robot Studio modules. So there you go, thank you guys. And thank you for listening and watching and hope this was able to help you on how to create a tool.